My editor, David, went through back in Hearthstone's history and found clips of popular content creators. I'm, ass I'm assuming pro players are in this. I may not, that may not be true. Reacting to new car, new cards at the time. It's like watching a car accident about to unfold, but you can't look away, dude. And we're going to see how they reacted to them. The legendary that you get for the second wing, the second week is in my opinion the best card um, released in all of the next set and it's Lothep. I honestly think this card will be in every single deck. All right. Okay, hold on a second, hold on a second. So at the time, Crip was absolutely right. Lothep ended up being arguably the strongest card in like the first couple years of Hearthstone because the card was literally in basically every single deck. He is absolutely right. Crip's actually insane, oh my God. All right, Lothep. A lot of hype over this card, heralded in as the Miracle Killer. I, I have tended to be of the less enthusiastic person about this card because... Uh, oh no. <laughs> I've more of said it was the Harrison Jones of spells. It's really good against spell heavy decks. In a minion heavy deck like Zoo, Lothab's just a 5 mana 5-5, five five, which isn't very... Very good. <laughs> Dude, watching that in hindsight is so brutal. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. Let me watch that again. Let me watch that again. Oh, I hated watching that. The decks in a minion heavy deck like Zoo. Lothab's just a five mana five five, which is- Okay, so let me think about this. The best deck going into Nax Ramus was Zoo Warlock at the time. So Trump's philosophy ended up being that if you play Lothab against the deck that's just going to play minions, it does nothing. But we all we all know that Loth have ended up being a lot better than that. Crips, oh my god, uh, Crips go. First one I said is Undertaker. Undertaker uh, is a pretty damn good one drop. Uh, the problem is that for one two it dies to pretty much every two drop. So it's some potential, but not really too sure. Oh my god, David, this is a sick. This is this video is gonna kill me at the end of it, man. <laughs> Undertaker, for those of you who don't know, was probably the strongest card for a very long time. It was so good that games would end on turn four or five because if you played Undertaker on turn one as a hunter and your opponent could not answer the board immediately, like they couldn't answer Undertaker, the game was over. The game was done. Sure, how? How far will it go? Undertaker. Uh, this is a really efficient minion. I think it's going to spawn a completely different type of zoo where you have Undertaker. I think uh, this could be one of the top cards of the future. Dude, it's crazy that they're like the polar opposites. Wow. What the hell? Okay. Web Spinner. Oh man. Web Spinner is unremarkable in the same way that Loot Hoarder and Novice Engineer are unremarkable, but. Just because a card is unremarkable doesn't mean it's like a, it's a cog in the engine. I think it warrants a spot in the Hunter decks. Trump is right. Web Spinner was really good in the Undertaker deck, as far as I remember. But I think it was like whatever. You usually would go like Undertaker coin Web Spinner to protect it. It was just nice to have an additional Death Rattle into your deck, but it ended up being good. This is the Hunter card, Web Spinner. Death Rattle, Draw Run, Beast card. It's a piece of trash. And <laughs> okay. Includes all the max cards. Hope you guys enjoy it. Dark bomb. Do you guys think that Crip and Trump like got to a Discord call and went like, all right, I'm gonna say this, you say the opposite? This is the most exciting, boring <laughs> card I've ever seen. Uh, True. This card might be a little too happy for a Warlock card. I'm not even sure why it's a Warlock card. Uh, with Soulfire getting nerfed, I do see players perhaps playing this card instead. A little bit suboptimal compared to mage cards. So I don't know, maybe we'll see some kind of- Crip was describing that Soulfire ended up getting nerfed. Soulfire, for those of you who don't remember, used to call it zero mana, which was very good. Uh, so it got nerfed to one. It ended up being still good. It was still played for a very long time. I believe it was actually just played forever uh, until it finally rotated or got kicked out of the core set. I don't remember what happened first. Uh, and then Dark Bomb was introduced. Dark Bomb is literally Frostbolt without the fact that it could freeze and they gave it to Warlock. This card ended up being very good in a lot of different Warlock decks. It was burned for Zoo Warlock, even though Soulfire was still considered better. But it ended up also just being really good in handlock like this card was just i think trump really described it perfectly right there the most exciting but boring card warlock has got but overall i think this card is kind of weak it doesn't do anything like just nah i'm not really crazy about this card you might look at this wow, card and be like wow this card is so much worse than frostbolt this card is so much worse than wrath the thing that makes this so exciting is it's for warlock so whereas <laughs> before you had demon fire now you have a warlock card that deals three damage. Incredible. Now we have the mage legendary. A little bit disappointing to see such a bad card for mage, but hey, at least it's better than Bolvar. I don't think it'll be cons- What was Bolvar again? It was five mana, one seven divine shield. Is that what that card was? 
Now that card was pretty bad. I think I think he was right. I think he was right. It was it's better than Boulevard in this state. Consistent enough to warrant <laughs> play, but it's very fascinating. This is actually really weird. I, I don't know what to think about this. I don't know. I, I don't know about this card. Uh, Wait, it's actually really interesting that all of them were like, I'm not sure about this card. Fun fact for you, for those of you who don't know, um, I have to show you guys because I think it's very funny. Uh, they actually ended up updating the card uh, with like the core set and the or not the core set with the Caverns of Time expansion. Now it does this. Uh, I still think it's a plane, but there you go. Thanks, Blizzard. Really, really poggers. It's a pirate. One-eyed cheat. If you have a pirate rogue deck, this is a pretty good card, I feel. 4-1 uh, survives against some guys, and if you can stealth them up and you can attack and stealth them up again, maybe you can do some cool stuff. I don't know. And TQ bot. Oh, this is... It was that, that card was bad, right? That card ended up being very bad because Rogue didn't have a good pirate deck at the time and you're not playing a two mana 4-1. Four, one. A 4-1, four, one, one health for a two mana card is absolutely horrific. I don't even know if it was playable in Arena, dude. This is the cutest picture ever. Look at this, this is a heart. Look at that. Don't play this guy, it's so bad. Three, three. Ain't no way he just said this is so bad. Body, restore eight health. Like you, you, you're healing, touch, you're touching yourself. Five mana. Don't play this card. Uh, remember what I said is, uh... For those of you who don't know, <laughs> Anti-Healbot was one of the best cards to come for mid-range-esque and slower decks. Uh, even though a five mana three, three stat line wasn't very good at the time, it was horrific to be honest with you. Restoring eight health to your hero in a format that didn't have a ton of heal and this was a neutral minion, it ended up being a pretty much an auto include if you're playing a slower deck. It was very good. Uh, remember what I said is, uh, actually, it's actually quite good uh, because it Dude, Amaz, what are these? Has Amaz. a very good body. Um, I think it's a staple in all mech decks. No shot, dude. He just said it's a staple in all mech decks. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> okay, so it's even funnier that that this this card because Ben Bro came out later and he pretty much described that there's a card in the game that it's very bad currently and it's considered like the worst deck in the worst card in the game it wasn't confirmed but it was like this card was basically the worst card in standard like you actually made your deck worse by playing it uh we actually did a whole video on that this card is like totally crazy so all you got to do is uh fill up a shaman board with six other random creatures and totems and garbage and we just take a moment and appreciate with Chad right here, dude. Holy moly. Play this and then you bloodlust and then it's pretty much game over. Very good card, okay? I would play this in Zoo. I would play this. It's insane. Windfear is crazy in Zoo. Divine Shield is the best in Zoo. So, two in Zoo. Done. Boom. And Hanso Meccano is one of those cards which is really good when you're ahead and really bad when you're behind. And like I explained True. with Matter Bomber, that is the type of card which is not as good okay so enhancer mechanic ended up being a card that saw some play it didn't see no play it was okay in arena as far as i'm concerned but trump's take was actually perfectly accurate of that card when you're ahead this card is very good when you're behind it is absolutely useless and trump saw that very well done now we have implosion or imp Lotion. Okay, before we do this, before we even hear what they have to say here, guys, this is by far one of my least favorite cards that has ever existed, and it still haunts me to this day how much I hate this card. Uh, one one imps are very difficult to actually uh, make too much use out of them. I don't know. There have to be better cards that you can pick from. I don't blame Crib for saying that. I don't blame him for saying that. You know, this is, it, we've never really had a card like this. This card ended up being an auto include in any zoo S type warlock deck. Uh, it turned out that even dealing damage to a minion and summoning minions behind it was good. It was even better when you had a knife juggler on board. Uh, oh, this card is beautiful. Look at this guy. Oh, five mana six, six that you can't interact with. Trades two for one, most likely. Love it. It's just. <laughs> Dr. Boom. This card. Oh, no. Okay, right, hold on. Quick highlight here. Um, Absolutely unplayable, I think, in standard. I'm trying to remember if any deck tried it, and I think it turned out to be just horrific. Maybe in Arena. I think Arena was probably goaded, right? But yeah, it Most saw no play in standard. I have to admit, by the way, I think that most of these reviews are catered towards the standard format. I'm not sure if any of them really considered it for Arena. Amazing. Dr. Boom. This card's really good in Arena. In Constructed, though, there are going to be better late game legendaries than Dr. Boom, and I wouldn't anticipate seeing much of Dr. Boom in Constructed. 
Yeah, it's pretty cool. But this guy looks like Doctor Doom, so this is like a pretty cool Marvel card. I like that. Uh, this is also an insane card. Like seven drops have been so good in GVG oh, now. Like, seven boss. seven with two one ones that also deal damage when they die. It, it, it's crazy. If you can play this on like a dry board, like an empty board, it's awesome. Bro, Amaz went from just absolutely trolling to being the prophet of our generation. To be honest, like seven seven with two one ones that also deal damage Holy when they die. It, it's crazy. If you can play this on like a dry board, like an empty board, it's wow, awesome. it's and so then crazy. And my favorite card of Goblin vs. Gnomes, the last one. Trogzor! This card is insane. Like, this card is insane. Uh, the normal case is that they use a spell and kill this. You get a 3-5. You know, the Burly Rock draws the 3-5, yeah? If you get more than one, this card just gets completely out of control. Like, imagine you're up against the Warrior Control deck, and they're like, oh, the only way I can get rid of this is Slam Execute. And then they slam Trogzor, and then they execute Trogzor, and you have two 3-5s. No, actually, then you have a 5-5 five, five and a 3-5. Like, this is just crazy. Let me tell you, okay? I, I like this. I love this card. You play Lothep to kind of, like, <laughs> deny the spells. And then the following turn, you play, like, Trogs or maybe with a coin, it's perhaps. Like, uh, just it's like watching a car accident about to unfold, but you can't look away, dude. Make it so you punish the spells again. You, people have to cast spells. You have to make... You have to cast spells, okay? <laughs> oh, it's also worth mentioning that the 7 slot is really open right now so that it costs seven is so good because there's no cards competing for it this card's going to have some hilarious games and yet it is kind of like fogger <laughs> in the sense that uh if you're tied or you're ahead it's really good but if you're behind it's quite bad okay fair enough this card I want to say in Hearthstone's history might be the most overhyped card in all of Hearthstone. I don't know if that's 100% true. I have to get my memory jogged a little bit about what, what we're reviewing here. But this was like presented as this card is going to absolutely tear your ass up if it gets played. Uh, I don't think I saw this card get played other than the very first day uh, because people were trying it out. It turned out that... On average, this card doesn't do anything. Dr. Boom was significantly better, and it ended up being that this card sucked, and Dr. Boom was the absolute Dr. Seven that it ended up being. Emperor Theresen. Emperor. <laughs> I was waiting for the review. Theresen, or I thought it was. I'm laughing. I'm laughing, but you guys all know that I suck at pronouncing too, but I'm going to I'm gonna be like you guys and, and just laugh at this while I can. Thar, I don't know. Fuck it. Emperor Tharasan. This card might be the most insane card in the set. Your must-have, if you will. Emperor Thorisin was very good. It's still... I don't know if it's played in wild. There might be just better mana cheating going on anyways. But Emperor Thorisin at 6 mana 5-5 five, five during its time was phenomenal. Because a 5 mana 5-5 five, five was like basically the standard for a 5 drop at the time. So if this card just kind of one card, you're happy. But often it would discount a lot more because you're putting this into a deck that you could, you know, discount your whole hand, etc. Fundamental to Grim Patron Warrior because it allowed you to combo your opponent out of your mind at the time. Major Domo Executus, which is a very interesting card. It's nine mana for a nine seven, which basically makes it terrible because it costs nine mana and anything that costs nine mana is generally terrible unless it wins you the game. And actually this guy can do the opposite. Hot garbage. Uh... <laughs> cost nine mana and anything that costs nine mana is generally terrible unless you win to the game and actually this guy can do the opposite hot garbage uh he give me gets big game honored even if it doesn't you're paying nine mana for a war golem but death rattle that's where it's at you replace your hero with ragnaros the fire lord we're gonna be ragnaros guys I'm definitely gonna play it because it's gonna be awesome, cool, but it help is not a lot to play with. To be fair, to be fair, all of them pretty much got on the money, but you have to give Hearthstone credit because at the time when this card was released, it was very exciting, right? We've never really seen a card that said turn into Ragnaros. Dude, that's awesome. Like that's so cool. Because the only real hero card in the game is Lord Jaraxxus. So this is great. Like that was that was that's really well done. Everyone was excited for it. Even a content creator, you're so excited for this. Cards that people want to say is like the best card when a set's released. Uh, in GVG, a lot of people would say that Dr. Boom was the best in their opinion. I think that Quickshot is actually the best card because I don't think there's any neutral in this set that is going to be played in 100% of decks. Whereas I think Quickshot will be played in 100% of Hunter decks. He's actually a genius. Holy crap. Right now, right, being a Hunter and then playing all your cards and then getting a benefit. It's basically Dark 
bomb, except better, because we all know hunters needed more direct damage and True. more card draw to draw more direct damage to come up with more bullshit kills. Uh-oh, a card for face hunter. I think this is a very good hunter, face hunter card as well. There you go, face hunters. You're pretty happy with this card. Yeah, uh, quick shot ended up being very good. Uh, it already, like one of the best cards in Hunter because you would just, just, you would actually just empty your hand so fast that Quickshot just ended up drawing you an extra card. So you're paying two mana to deal three damage to your opponent's face and draw a card to follow up. Really, really good. Was it the best card of Blackrock Mountain? Honestly, in hindsight, it might've, but I think Emperor Thorsten ended up being pretty impactful too. There's also, um, which we might see later, Flame Waker. That's, that's the other time. That's the other time. If you're running a rogue card with a lot of draw, it'd be pretty decent. I imagine if you're running some kind of like turtle rogue, I'd imagine it'd be extremely powerful because you can imagine a case where you're playing a control deck. I thought rogue would be the best class on release, uh, even though it got this card gang up, which is complete and utter shit, completely unplayable. I think this card's terrible. We'll never see play for any reason. Let's move on to the other guy. So you can beat up just about any control deck. So <laughs> Grim Patron, that's- Gang up actually made Mill Rogue a real archetype. Um, before that, there what you basically play Cold Light Oracle. Cold Light Oracle would draw two cards for you and your opponent. And because you got Gang Up, you can Gang Up twice for your Cold Light Oracles or a different card. You would Shadow Step your Cold Light Oracle. So basically you could just deck your opponent super quickly and you would still have cards in your deck and then they would die to fatigue. That was actually a real win condition in Hearthstone for a little bit there. But if you ask people, did they like playing against it? Most people would say no. Grim Patriot. That's a pretty exciting card when you first look at it. I question its viability, but it's certainly going to be tried out. This is a card that's also really tough to evaluate. There's lots of those in this set. Uh, it's a pretty like cheap win condition. Um, I mean, if you just like play it, taskmaster it, hit something. I, I mean, I can see this easily getting out of hand very quickly. Holy moly, I feel like that's a little bit too techy. It's kind of hard to really pull off. Um, yeah, I mean, if they have a two attack minion, which are probably not very common, yeah. I guess it can get a little bit out of control. I believe this card synergizes perfectly with the bombers. And I'm not joking, okay? Someone cooked here. This card belongs in like a gimmick deck. It's kind of like a win condition because it's very expensive. Um, I still don't see this being played a lot, except in very, very tight uh, decks. Okay, so looks like it's a bot minion. I can only see it being used like in decks like this Elven Archers. Uh... Nah, not impressed with this card. Holy moly, Kalento, my god. It's funny too, because Kalento ended up being one of the best pilots of Grim Patron. If you guys didn't know, Grim Patron ended up being the most powerful archetype for a brief period of time there. It was so good that the Hearthstone team preemptively nerfed it before the Grand Tournament or some time around there, because the deck would just absolutely beat any other deck if you understood how to play it properly. I think during this time, Grim Patron probably was the most iconic deck ever and got the most iconic nerf ever with Warsong Commander getting your charge minions have plus one attack uh, before Reno was introduced. This was the most fun to watch Hearthstone played at the highest level. Watching people play Grim Patron Warrior was an absolute delight and I kind of really miss it. Mage rare, three mana two, four. I don't think the missiles are good enough. Like off the top, I don't think it's gonna be played. The combo costs too much and a three mana for just a two, four with this, uh, it's a nice bonus. Oh, no but I don't think it's quite good enough. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, Trump, Trump, Trump. This card was very good. It fit into Tempo Mage. It also fit into like a combo oriented mage deck. Flame Waker was a card that I would consider has pseudo taunt, where like, if you don't kill this card ASAP, you probably just lose the game. So the dragon, we got the hungry dragon. It's four for a five, six which is uh, basically as good as any other four drop in terms of stats, and it has the battle cry to summon a random one cost minion for your opponent. So, and the battle cry, it might seem negative, but as with most things in Hearthstone, things that look negative are often positive. In fact, very positive. In fact, really, really, really positive in some cases. Well, let's say you have uh, played a Raging Worgen on turn three and you need to enrage him. Well, what you can do is on turn four, you can play this guy, then enrage your Worgen, then proceed to own your opponent's face or kill another minion. So you can use it in, in enrage mechanics and also 
one thing I used to do, I used to play like Leroy just, just because it spawned minions for my opponent so I could combo him with mind control tech because a lot of people in Arena actually played on mind control tech and it constructed it's just kind of hard for some boys. classes to actually play it's a four minions. For so this card helps that. It just puts crap on the board on their side. So if they have like three creatures, well, it's it's Hungry Dragon, mind control tech combo time. So it makes that card much more play. And again, just because people usually gravitate to us towards aggressive <laughs> decks, making it so you could use him against control decks with this card combo makes it absolutely incredible. Oh, and it's a dragon. So it's really good at that because it probably needs a lot of dragons for your dragon synergy. So probably a lot of people are gonna play this card. Yeah, this is really broken. Hungry Dragon. This oh, card has gotten a lot of hype. So we establish a four mana four five isn't that great in constructed. A four mana five five would be incredible. This is a great card. This one does require a little bit of playing around. Hungry Dragon though, on the other hand, I like this card because it's a very fat body. Now People say people compare it to like Pit Lord, yeah, because it's a four mana five six as well. But like summoning a one cost minion for opponent can be kind of exploited. Like we, we, it's not enough to add pile the shredder. Let's add another minion which will be like decent, playable, and still get dragon, so it will be good for dragon synergy decks. But let's make it random, random based. Everyone likes random, right? That's one of the. Hold on, hold on. Read the comments on the Facebook page. I for one welcome our new standard four drop. Not only is its good stat, its stats is good. It can also drop from a six mana shredder. I don't know why people say it's a bad card. It's going to replace the yetis and majority of one drops are useless and have a single health. Broken card should have made it a random two cost minion to make it more balanced. Oh my God. First card spoiled and it was probably the one that people were the most excited for. And this is a card that's so, it looks so good because it is when it's good, obviously. I don't expect this to see as much play as Piloted Shredder. I'm just going to start off with that. I think Piloted Shredder is insane. I still yep. think it's the best four drop in the game. Yep. But Hungry Dragon is a dragon, and it's just like good on its own. This is just insane for a tempo deck. You get a four mana five oh, six. The drawback is negligible. You could have Backstab instead. Very good card for Rogue. I can't stress that enough. Oh, God. Raynan was so close, and then he just dropped the ball so fast there. Hungry Dragon saw no play. Maybe it was tested the first couple of days and then people were like, why are we playing this when Pilot of Shredder exists? Uh, yeah, it kind of died. Uh, it's crazy. I, I, I actually don't remember people being so high up on Hungry Dragon. Very good card for Rogue. I can't stress that. Good card for Rogue? Was this card played in Rogue? Why is this card good in Rogue? You mentioned the backstab. Even after hearing the backstab, I was still like, how is this good for Rogue? But that's hindsight, right? Sure. Legendary, kind of cool. He basically killed legendaries, but again, um, if a lot of people are playing aggressive decks where they don't have legendaries, this card is absolute trash. Welcome to Hemet Nessingwary version 2. Even if you didn't have the necessity to hold a dragon, it would still be bad. It's basically BGH, except it costs 4 more mana. The 4 health is crippling. It even has the attack value which can get BGH'd. I'm sorry, Ren Blackhand. He deserves better. Red Black Hand, uh, I think in a Dragon deck it will make sense to play this. Like, it's a it's a fatter EGH, I guess. I, I, it's a very specific, uh, meta-specific card. Uh, then we can get to this guy. He's bad. Uh, moving on, we got the <laughs> Mist Caller. Not just a Mist Caller, this is the Mist Caller. I have no idea how to evaluate this card. My impression is that it's very good. But until I actually see how big of a difference those stat boosts make, uh, it's tough for me to evaluate how good it is. The Mist Caller, Shaman Legendary. People went absolutely crazy when this card was uh, announced on stream. This card, I think, is is pretty pretty good. Uh, but I think some people really um, expect too much of this card. They're like, "Whoa, this card is gonna break the game." Eh, not really. It's not going to do that. Um, I mean, there's a reason people don't play Sword of Justice, because it kind of sucks. We know the game is going to slow down, but it needs to slow down a whole lot for this card to be really, really, really good. Was a pretty strong uh, effect. Dude, now, Crip actually was really spot on. So was Raynaud, to be fair. Raynaud said the effect looked really good, but he has to play with it. Uh, the Mist Caller kind of sucked ass. The problem with Mist Caller is it's six mana for a 4-4 four four for plus one, plus one. And you may not even draw this on turn six. So putting it into your deck was basically like you're throwing up. I wouldn't say useless, but it didn't really see any play that's a pretty strong effect now the thing is there's no deck currently out there which 
focuses so much on targeting minions with spells. And it's definitely built to you with the meaning to be competitive because the stats are good and the ability is strong. Uh, we'll see. I hate this mechanic, honestly. Um, the cards are good, um, but man, the second they make an untargetable version of this shit, I'm done playing the game, period. <laughs> like, Hexproof is the stupidest fucking R&D desi design decision ever. I hate the mechanic of buffing minions uh, and being rewarded for it. It's It upsets me in a lot of ways. But moving on past that whole thing, uh, is the card good? Yeah, both of them are pretty strong. So if you do have decks that are running buffs or you have decks that just have a lot of targeting stuff, um, these cards are going to be pretty good. So overall, uh, these are Aedis and I'll just show you guys the next one, uh, Fuel the Lightbane. These are probably the most playable cards in the TGT expansion that we've seen so far, actually. Okay, hold on. I can't wait to see the reviews of this. Wow, this is a crazy video. Whew, God, there's a lot here. Okay, Raynad was talking about more about um, the design of this card, which I don't really have any thought process. I'm not someone who is going to say that, you know, the design is bad, etc. Implosion, face value, just horrible card. I didn't think this was that bad to play against. I thought it was fine. But... I, I, maybe I'm just wrong, but I don't think this car saw either one of these cards saw a ton of play during TGT. And I'm pretty sure as more sets were introduced, they still didn't really see a ton of play. And I, I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure they didn't see play, but I honestly can't remember for the life of me. Oh man, at 2 4, you know, extreme stats, uh, but he can't attack unless you play your hero power. Wow. It's it's bad, but it's not like the absolute worst. And I feel like there's a lot of value in just threatening those stats uh, that's not seen immediately. And if you're just never hero powering, does it kind of have taunt? I mean, is your opponent just going to let it live and threaten all his little minions? Or is he going to kill it? I think he's going to kill it most of the time. What? Yo, what was Raynad thinking here, bro? What? <laughs> what? This card sucked ass. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, really bad. Really bad. Most of the time. How is this card 7 mana again? So it's like a two-piece death wing that doesn't discard your hand and you get to keep. Am I reading into this correctly? <laughs> okay, it's, it fucking sucks. <laughs> mm. It's alright. Acid Ma at the time was one of the worst cards printed for TGT. Saw literally zero play. The only time you would see this card actually getting played was because of the Sneeds card summoning this card. Funny enough, they actually print, they actually buffed, just like Flame Leviathan, they buffed Asin Maw. And Asin Maw ended up being this card right here, a three meta four two. And it only affects enemies and it might see play. Uh, so this is my kind of like sleeper pick. I guess it's like my wall card, my pick for maybe number 11. I'm a little bit, uh, it's like a high variance card. So talking about a little bit about this card, I feel like this card has like a lot of potential to be something like a another Dr. Boom for Paladin. Uh, so I could see maybe running like one of each secret other than eye for an eye with this, or maybe like two of one and okay. one of two others, something like that. <clears throat> this is kind of my sleeper pick. It might go up like as a potential to be like a top five card. Or Holy my Strike is not really used. On um, the money. It's hard to say how good Basically. this will be because Paladin Secrets are notoriously shitty. But you bet your ass I'm going to play two of these guys. I'm going to have two of every Paladin Secret in the game in my deck. And I'm going to do my best to survive, play this guy, and see what happens. Um, I expect the result to be pretty good. I expect some people will also try this plan. But I don't expect people will eventually run this type of deck. Because, well, this guy costs a lot of mana. But it's, it's really cool. Wait. What the fuck? All the secrets equipped at once? Am I reading this correctly? <laughs> yeah, this is a mad scientist threesome right there. Here we go, mad scientist threesome. That's what we're gonna call this card. And that's not something I would want to watch. Put one of each secret. Strip from your deck into the battlefield. I feel like um, this card is pretty bad. I mean, oh. Oh, man, that's tough to say. Stats on that kind of card are something you would put into a control Wait, can deck, we just take a moment? I, Raina, what is he wearing, bro? What's this shirt? Is he wearing jeans on his t-shirt? You 
don't want to play those Paladin Secrets in a control deck. So I don't think Mysterious Challenger will be played at all. Wow, that's actually wild. Um, this card, okay, I. what do you want me to say here, dude? This card was fucking insane, right? This card was, uh, I mean, TGT was a pretty low power level expansion. Mysterious Challenger after Grim Patron, before Grim Patron was the deck. Grim Patron was nerfed. This card was probably the best card the best deck in the game, Mr. Challenger, you go turn one minion with Paladin into turn two shielded mini bot into turn three muster for battle, turn four pilot of Shredder, turn five low Feb, mysterious challenger, Dr. Boom. That's all you had to do and you would win games. This card was insane. This is a very good example of cards that seem overpowered, but then when you actually play with them, you quickly realize uh, they actually kind of suck. They suck really bad. Um, I think this is that. I, I like it. I like it. Even though it fucks free smash over, I like it. It's uh, Pastor th 31 here, goaded. Trump is an angel, a goddess of love. Amen. It's like, it's it's good for the meta that I want. I don't want this fucking smork meta. <sighs> uh, Bolf Ram Shield ended up being really bad. Uh, the problem with Bolf Ram Shield is that if your opponent played this on turn six and you had minions on board, you just hit their face. I guess you healed nine, but... Anti heal bot was already in the game. This card did see play when the jailer came out. I missed that combination. Jailer was nerfed. F and chaff for jailer at the time. Horrible. Rathguard. Two mana, four, three. Man, I look at the stats and I'm like, yes. Two mana, four, three. Those people who are shy about damage because they don't understand the concept of using life as a resource will be like, oh, I'm too scared to use this card. No. Oh. They might be the same people who think that Flame Imp is. Not so good, but turns out that Flame Imp is a great card, and Wrathguard, similarly, is also a great card. Oh god, that one's interesting. Um, I can see where Trump was coming from, because he's right, like, Flame Imp for a lot of people were like, why is this card good? I'm dealing 3 damage myself to summon a 3-2, but the reason why Flame Imp was so good was that a one-time, that was a one-time effect, and you got to play it on turn one. The problem with Wrath Guard is that that wasn't a static three damage. It's whatever damage this minion took, you actually took to your face. So that means if you took, if this got traded in with eight attack, you just fucking took it. The problem with it being a two mana four three is that two drops traded into this anyways. Uh, it doesn't seem overpowered enough to really fit into a constructed meta game, but it's not bad either. All right. Next, we have Gormok the wait, Impaler. And <laughs> wait, was that the review? <laughs> it's not bad either. All right. <laughs> Next, we have Gormok. <laughs> oh my god, Raydon. Flame Juggler uh, was good. It was actually played, I mean, it's a two mana, two, three. The thing about it was that RNG that early in the game could actually snowball pretty pretty hard. So if you ended up hitting like a two one or a one health minion, it did actually end up mattering. And I think that's why Raidad reacted like this because that level of RNG kind of deciding a game felt really bad to play against. All right. Next, we have Gormok the Impaler. Right. This is a card I'm pretty excited about. Uh, back in the like closed beta of Hearthstone, one of my favorite decks to tune was Token Druid. And uh, I actually played a lot of different token decks. I played Token Shaman. The point is, there are a lot of token effects now that are really strong. You can do this in Paladin, where you can like use a hero power to make dudes. You have Muster, and it's nuts. You can use it in Zoo with Implosion and Haunted Creeper, and it's nuts. You can use it in Shaman with the new like Tusker Totemic. Uh, Feral Spirits, just Haunted right, Keeper there too. It's a really powerful card, honestly. This might see a ton of play. I can't remember the last time that I could reliably get four minions on the field. It's impossible. Card is trash. But interesting. But trash. This card ended up being pretty fringe. The The issue was exactly what Trump said. If It's pretty difficult to actually get four, dam four other minions on the board to get four damage it did see play i think the biggest problem with gormak though was just why would you play this when you could just play piloted shredder all right going to number 10 master jouster so i believe this is the strongest jousting card in the set even though it looks like just a sunwalker with plus one plus one a sunwalker with plus one plus one is quite good uh, master jouster is interesting so uh, but the thing is, a 6-mana 5-6 is pretty good stats. Like, it kills Emperor Thorson, it kills all the 5-drops, It like, it's bigger than Shield Maiden. 5-6 for 6-mana are really good stats, even if you lose the Joust. So, it's a great late-game minion, 
but I think it's going to be outclassed by other ones uh, for most decks moving forward. Uh, Master Jouster, I can't, I don't remember this card actually seeing any play. The real issue with this card was jousting kind of sucked ass because you're, you're, you're basically like to make jousting good, you have to make your deck expensive. But if your deck was expensive, you would just lose the early game. If your deck wasn't expensive and you try to joust with this card, you often just lose the joust. <laughs> this card, I don't remember seeing play. Now, maybe the arena was good. I, I, I can't remember. I actually can't remember it seeing play, which makes me believe that I think the card was just trash. I uh, I cannot say that it is like an auto include in like control or your decks. I think it's going to be very far from that, but I think it's an option. I think uh, under some possible meta games, it will be a good option. Oof, oof. Okay, if he just said this card wouldn't be an auto include in a majority of decks, I would have agreed with him because, you know, most of the classes got an upgraded hero power that wasn't very good. Like Warlocks, for instance, was instead of taking two damage, you take no damage. Like, are you going to play a six mana six three to get that? Probably not. But Control Warrior really like this card, because if you could play this card and you're not dead the following turn, it turned out, especially during a set like TGT, getting four armor a turn for two mana rather than two was a very good trade off. It was just really, really good. It was really, really good. Probably my favorite legendary in this whole expansion so and far yeah, from what I've seen. Fun. You're going to want to play. You're going to want to build your deck around it for sure and not have too many of those two mana drops that warriors just gotten varian rin the king himself so maybe at first i didn't rate this too highly i'm thinking about this more i think this is actually a really strong card for control warrior i think this could like it's a very good replacement for your sarah varian rin warrior legendary uh this card is like really insane it seems like almost all the cards in tgt kind of promote a slow or mid-range type of deck and with uh even even a moderate amount of flexibility this card is like uh bat bat shit op and finally <laughs> the big daddy another legendary that costs 10 putting varian rin alongside legends such as deathwing and nobody else Seven mana, five, five, draw two cards. Man, if that card were in Control Warrior, boy, would you want to play it. It's possible. Or you play Varian Rin, and then you get, like, the Bruisers, Ragnaros to go with it. Maybe you, uh, maybe you feel particularly fun. You get the Ice Hell out there also, because why not? Gromish out there. Moving on, we have Varian Rin, which is a 10 mana, seven, seven. This is, like, the legendary that I think is probably, people are probably most excited for in the set. My initial impression was that this card was very good. And as far as the value you get from it, yes, it's good. Yes, it's good against Big Game Hunter. Yes, it's good against Silence Effects. There's nothing that, like, wrecks this card. The question is, uh, in what matchups am I going to want to play a 10 mana dude uh, in my deck? And the answer is really only Control Mirrors. It's just so bad in, like, 80% of matchups just because it's a 10 mana dude that I think... Um, it's not nearly as good as people think it is. Interesting. Okay, so very yeah, this was definitely at the time for TGT was like the most hyped legendary as far as I remember. People were really ecstatic for it. Uh the the I think the bigger problem with Varian Rin was like it was too slow. Maybe mid-range, maybe mid-range is what it was. I think control warrior, the problem is like you don't want to play a card like this because often if you're gonna if this is only gonna be good in a control warrior mirror or a mirror match, uh you you're gonna lose to fatigue because that's just one brawl and it's fucking like you're down so many minions potentially etc so i think it was played in mid-range warrior to kind of like have an additional board it wasn't like the worst card ever like it didn't end up being like utter shit people did play this card but it was hyped up to be like the greatest legendary of the set and it just fell flat a dread scale on the other hand this card's nuts i'm pretty sure this will be kind of a staple in hunter decks moving forward uh, if you're a hunter main i definitely recommend crafting this card because a three mana four two is already like jungle panther type of stats it is actually a beast so it's like the stats are passable to begin with but then the fact that at the end of your turn you deal one damage to all other minions this is just a really strong effect to tack on to a three mana four two beast uh dread skill did see play it did see play but again i don't think it was like a staple it ended up being a little worse because it would affect your board as well so like what minion what deck do you really want to put this in and why would i put dread skill in an aggro deck when i would rather just continuously like fight for the board aggressively and hit my opponent in the face yeah i think it's just because hunter decks were super aggressive at the time and this card was bad you didn't want to put it in there evil heckler Four mana, five, four taunt. Uh, so this is basically Booty Bay Bodyguard with one mana less. When you reduce the cost of a card by one, it's a really big deal. 
Um, so this card is actually pretty good. Uh, and also, it's not really fair because uh, it's kind of power creep. Um, so, I mean, what's what's up with that, Ben Brode? Like, apparently, uh, ben ben. we don't want to buff bad cards, but uh, we just want to release strictly better versions in the expansion pack. <laughs> oh, I, I, that wasn't mentioned, you know? Yeah, uh, it's not strictly better, technically, because um, if you're playing a Jousting deck and you want a 5-4 uh, Taunt for whatever reason, um, if your opponents are always playing Evil Hecklers as their 5-4 Taunt, you could be playing Booty Bee Bodyguard to also have the 5-4 Taunt, but your Booty Bee Bodyguard would win a Joust against their True. Evil Hecklers every time, right? True. Twitch chat finally gets its uh, its own Hearthstone card. True. Uh, that's what we call power creep. Rip. Booty Bay will never see play again. <laughs> oh my god. This <laughs> power creep. <laughs> this is actually, I think, the first instance of pure power creep. Uh, why, Blizzard? Why? I wanted to play Magma Ragers. Uh, I guess there is some way where it's worse than Magma Rager. I guess if you have a Cult Master in play, and you're a mage, and you're in a top deck situation with your opponent at 6 life, and you have two cards in your deck, one card is Fireball, and the other card could either be Ice Rager or Magma Rager. If you draw Magma Rager, you can ping the Magma Rager, draw your Fireball, and lethal your opponent. And True. Ice Rager will fail to do that. Ice Rager, I don't, like, what the f***? This is just stupid. I just thought of some really good Magma Rager decks. They add this card, it's Batman. Uh, I don't know, when I play Mortal Kombat, I've always been more of a Scorpion fan rather than Sub-Zero, so... I'm a little salty that Magma Rager is smaller than Ice Rager, but, eh. It is what it is. This card saw no play in Arena. It saw play, but he is right. It is a complete power creep over Booty Bay Bodyguard. And it was just like, there was no denying Blizzard. They basically said, hey, buy our cards because they're strictly better than all their cards. That's basically what it was. Same concept with Ice Ranger versus Magma Ranger. But I will say, Crip is absolutely cooking out of his mind with this one. This is amazing. Uh, Ice Ranger saw no play. I don't think it even saw play in Arena. It might have. I don't remember. But um, yeah, both of them were bad. They're just better cards than older cards and last but not least we have tournament attendee which is goldshire footman with flipped stats and uh yeah that's uh it's a card it does things and stuff it has stats <laughs> not much to say about this i think it'll see about as much play as goldshire footman but i think it is a little bit better goldshire footman fun fact i almost played that back in the day goldshire footman it, is the reason that I discovered Shield Bearer in Zoo because I started with two footmen, one Shield Bearer, just to test the one mana taunts to have more Void Walkers. And I realized Shield Bearer was being amazing every game, and a Goldshire Footman was not as good as Shield Bearer. So then I went to two Shield Bearer, one footman, cut the footman. There we go. Murloc Tiny Fin. Oh my god, power creep. Way, way better than Wisp. Uh, and technically it kind of is, because the Murloc tag is probably the most expensive tribal tag when it comes to budgeting a card, so putting it on basic card that are, exists like Wisp is pretty good. Some, most, act most battle cries are pretty horrible uh, when True. it comes to using them twice, they just don't do anything, or they're literally bad, but some of them can be pretty good. A lot of the joust effects are pretty good. A lot of the buff effects are pretty strong because they can trigger twice. For instance, you can play Brand, Brand Bronzebeard and drop like a Twilight Drake, and a Twilight Drake, you know, might basically gain seven health from your hand, but it'll gain seven health twice from your hand, so it'll be 15 health in the end instead of 8. It's hard to say if this card will be really, really powerful, but it's really, really fun. Um, this is probably one of my favorite cards in the set because of that. Bron Bronzebeard. Good stats, given its ability, a 3 mana 2, 4. It reminds you of Baron Rivendare, which didn't see that much play, but did see some attempts to be played. I don't think you can just put this into uh, most decks. You'd have to have a very specific strategy with it, which is like a battle cry strategy. Ain't no way. And I don't think that's quite there yet. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, Bran is a card, man. The, this is one of the few cards in Hearthstone 
that has only gotten better with new cards released, which says a lot about the card. I think it's easier in hindsight to be like, what the fuck were they thinking? Brand such a brand, such an insane card. Like they brought it back into standard last year and the card was fucking nuts. Like people hated that card because it was so good because battle cries have gone infinitely better at the time though i don't think crip is wrong like i can't remember bram being a card that was like oh shit like if i don't clear this board right now uh if i don't clear this mini right now i just lose the game and then tunnel trog shaman one mana card one three is good stats whenever you overload you gain plus one attack per locked man crystal that's cool um i feel like this card won't really work too well though unfortunately <laughs> it might be good enough to save this for when you play like a two overload or a three overload type of card or oh, in the later stages of the I game. I hate this fucking card. Like tempo at your opponent. But I don't feel it's good enough as a one drop. I feel like Zombie Chow is just way better than Shaman because you don't care if you heal your opponent. And there's not too many overload cards you okay. want to play on turn two. Hold on. I don't know if more people are going to review this. Hold on. Hold on. We got to talk about this. This is another card that at the time actually wasn't insane. It was played. Don't get me wrong. It was still fine. This card became very good soon after. Very good soon after. This deck wasn't Maybe insane probably. during League of uh, Explorers. I can't remember though. Maybe it was. At least one mana too expensive to really see play. Priest has a lot of board clears. They all kind of suck. This also sucks. So I guess it's in line with that. Uh, you already have a bunch of removals as a priest. No, I don't think it's good. I don't think it does enough in order to justify this. I think it just costs a little bit too much to make it work. A such a weird design, this card. Really nice. weird design. So this is like, I think this card is bad. With Light Bomb, you always have a clear. With Holy Nova, it benefits you more. So you are looking for a way where to shuffle this card into your opponent opponent's deck benefits you but that will never happen it's the the, the uh the oh fact God, that it kind of looks like it's a drawback it's like oh now your opponent can get can control when they cast it next time in a lot of cases it just won't be um so that's interesting to me that that like the fact that you're basically you know cursing your opponent's deck making it worse um in in many cases when you are going to be using this effect is very powerful it, it may just be too weak where for how much it costs and how much it does against uh mid-range style of decks because three damage for five mana is just not that much um, but uh, we'll see. I do appreciate. Yeah, okay, honestly, Killer Snake was the highest one here. Uh, this card was like this card was. I want. I don't want to say good. I want to say fine. Like it was played, but it wasn't like holy. F I can't wait to play this card. Light Bomb was in the game, and it had one more mana to deal a shit ton more damage. The thing about this card was that if your opponent drew it and they weren't playing a control deck, this was really good for you. And that's what Kilbert was saying. It seemed like everyone else was pretty like whatever about it though. I do appreciate cards which have strong stats and come with a drawback. I really love them. Uh, that said though, this one is going to hurt too much for control warriors. And in aggro warriors, I think it's got a tiny bit of potential. It's still fireball for one mana. It's pretty good. For what mana? It's pretty good usage of mana. Wow. This is a warrior weapon if you were curious. Yes, it does suck. You are right. <laughs> Animated armor. It is a mage on the card. I fucking love Crip. Holy shit, this man's goaded. Okay, this card sucked. Uh, didn't see play at all. It turned, I mean, I think it was tried out in aggro decks, but people soon realized like it, the drawback is too insane. Um, the problem with this card was like, you play this, if you don't kill your opponent as soon as fucking possible, you just lose. Animated <laughs> armor. It is a mage on the card for mana for four. Your hero can only take one damage at a time. So this card is actually super powerful at preventing damage, but it's still a four mana four four. So it's not really particularly strong, True. but it does actually combat a lot of the combo decks out there that try to aim you to aim to kill you on one turn in a very big way so it, i think it's actually a pretty strong card i think it will see play in some form or, or another it's just it, the effect is so powerful in some situations that it'll basically guarantee to see play at some point that's a bad card uh no it's terrible how is it good you can play Sengen instead it just has better body and protects you the same way i mean quanto yeah you're right but not really i don't know about that the thing about this card is the effect would almost be really good if it was a spell. Hmm. I wonder if they, I wonder if they ever did that. Hello, Dr. Five. So five mana, five, five. Cards cost five. Now you can play Dr. Boom on turn six. All yours. And the five mana, five, five isn't bad by default. Uh, if it has a useful ability. And this one's ability is pretty wild. 
I have high hopes for this card. It's an interesting card that you could not build a deck around because uh, you can't just put all the big cards in there, but it's a card that you could possibly put into a big deck. This card is super bad, right? <laughs> Why the fuck will that benefit you? So Naga Sea Witch is a card that you can definitely just build decks around. But if you play this on like turn 5 and your opponent doesn't kill it, like you can play, you know, Aviana next turn or whatever. Uh, you can play, you know, Deathwing, whatever else. And that's that's all pretty pretty cool. So I like that this is a, this is a sort of card that, that can spawn like an entirely new deck. I don't know if those decks will be good. The opinions on this card is actually pretty mixed. A lot of people hate it. But I think I think they're right. I think this card can screw you over. But in general, five drops in this game are really bad. So the Naga Sea Witch is just a pretty decent five drop. And, you know, if you're playing like Control Warrior, your opponent might be really scared of you playing like a big legendary minion that would other cost, otherwise cost like 7, 8, 9, maybe 10 mana. So um, I see this card seeing uh, a, a fairly effective play in a lot of the Control decks, particularly Control Warrior. So Naga Sea Witch, I believe in Standard, didn't really see a lot of play. Uh, the problem was is that this card would often just die, etc., whatever. Uh, Kibler's take was honestly really spot on. Like this is a card that you would maybe consider building a deck around, but it ended up not being great. The thing about this card is in wild, when enough giants, when you have enough giants, cause basically what happened is this card would be like your cards cost five. Then the giant effect would take on after so that you can, you could have basically giants on turn five that all cost zero, depending on how your hand looked, etc. Uh, I remember actually there was an ad on Reddit. I can't remember what year it was, but this guy literally paid for ads on Reddit so that he could tell the developers to nerf this card because he it was absolutely destroying the wild metagame. Uh, and they ended up actually nerfing it to eight mana because of, I want to say because of the ad, but like, <laughs> I don't know if that's actually true. But it was very funny. Uh, this card was in standard, though. I don't think it was very good. A uh, really cool concept, really cool card. Uh, but I don't know if it's really worth it to do that just to put this card in here. I was hoping this card will cost five mana. I actually thought it did cost five mana, but then they released it and it cost six mana. So, mm. yeah, the thing is, many cards are really good. So you want to have two. And it's, that's why it's not good. Nah, just, no, nah, not good. Reno Jackson. Reno Jackson, that's a really cool card. It's Tree of Life for only yourself. The oh. dream of control decks everywhere. And I feel like this deck, uh, this card will spawn a variety of decks. I have already oh, some Trump. really, really cool ideas with this card. This can, this card can just destroy Aggro by himself. Yeah, I, re I really, I really love this card actually. I love it. Okay, obviously, I don't think it really goes without saying. Uh, Trump's take was really good. Uh, if you drew this card on six against Aggro, like they lost basically, like 99% of the time they lost. Uh, that's pretty much what this was. Reno Jackson was a card that inspired people to play a brand new way of Hearthstone. I think. I think you could probably make the claim that Reno Jackson might be the most popular card ever introduced into the game other than Yogg. Like this is this is the card, like instead of calling it Highlander or Singleton, they literally called it Reno Dex because the card was so insanely fun and popular. I obviously the trade-off of Reno Jackson is that you don't have consistency. The consistency of a deck is often what makes a deck very good. But back in the day, restoring your health all the way back up to full was fucking nuts. Paladin card, summon seven Murlocs that die this game. This card like blows my mind in a bad way. It's like spectacularly bad. It, it seems so oh, amazingly no. disastrous that the fact that it's actually a card that went through the design process and made it to actually be a card in the Hearthstone game, oh, there's no. probably something I don't know. Oh really no, dude, no, oh, God. So, um, <laughs> probably the card is pretty good. Dude, hold on, this is me, this is me for this dude. Hold on. You're hearing Crip fucking say this? <laughs> like. It's a good spell for Murloc based Paladin, but Murloc based Paladin is not good still. 10 mana spell. Like, consider first think of 10 mana spell. And 10 mana spells are. 10 mana spells are super crap. Mm, I don't know about this card, man. It cannot be good. Nah, this card cannot work. I mean, I don't see Paladin Murloc gonna work, so. Oh. You have to, you'd have to have like seven really powerful Murlocs to this re for this to really be all that effective a spell. And I don't know that there are seven powerful Murlocs you can reasonably have. The biggest, the biggest problem with this is is less the deck building constraints and more just the mana cost. Ten is wow. it means that it is only going to come up in games that are going to enormous attrition. Anything can happen. 
So this, at first glance, looks like a complete joke card. For 10 mana, you summon seven relics. Like, what are you even going to do with that, one says. But I believe that any fin can happen. And I'd like to say that Paladins with their excellent Murloc Knight, that's two Murlocs right there. So what if you were to play this in a mid-range, like... <laughs> deck and you were to play the best murlocs and then i theorize about that and then i realize oh wait that doesn't work because there's no good mid-range murloc so you would have to be playing this in a m aggressive murloc deck and this absolutely doesn't make sense then so it turns out that any fin cannot happen dude okay that's actually wild theorize about so i don't know if this card was actually playable right from the get-go like the thing is is that i think like when they were reviewing this card they thought it had to be seven different Murlocs. I think that's what they probably thought because none of them actually thought that like you play blue gills and Murloc war leaders and then you resummon it. Like it would be really, really good. Uh, Murkai was also there. So you had like this, I think it was actually just straight up lethal. If you got blue gill, blue gill, old Murkai, war leader, war leader. I, I can't, I think it did 30 damage from hand. Uh, this card was nuts. This card ended up being fucking bonkers because control paladin had every tool in the kit to actually just stop you from winning the game and then they would just murder you uh this ended up being a very good card honestly in hindsight one of my favorite combo decks of all time i really like this card this card was fun uh trump actually was kind of fucking really smart i feel like people meme on him quite a bit but he was actually pulling out some fucking good takes here for the entire video. Uh, he would for most. Of, he had some questionable ones, but he honestly, uh, he was very, very good. I hope you guys like this. Uh, if this video does well, uh, we will do this again. Shout out to David for getting this all together because this this probably took him a little bit. David, I really appreciate you, man. Uh, this was fun as fuck. There's some, uh, yeah, because there's some good, uh, there's some good reviews coming up. Um, 